Okay, our target for today, I will be able to round decimal numbers in order to estimate decimal products. Don't forget to pause the video as you need to to write this down. Every slide will have the W up in the right hand corner. That W means to write into your notebook, please. Here are a few facts we just need to know in regards to estimating. If the factors are greater than one, the product will be greater than the factors. For example, 8 times 6 is 48. 8 is a factor. 6 is a factor. 48 is our product. Factor times factor equals product. Those are just terms for multiplication, right? So we can see that 48 is greater than 8. It's also greater than 6. And those factors are greater than 1 because 8 is greater than 1 and 6 is greater than 1. Therefore, our product will be greater than the factors themselves. 48 is greater than 8, and it's also greater than 6. But for our purposes today, working with decimals, if factors are less than 1, the product will be less than the factors. That sounds like a confusing sentence, but let me show you what I mean. Now we're looking at 0 0.8 times 0 0.6 that product is going to be 0 0.48, okay? The factors here are less than 1. Remember, the factors are what is being multiplied together. 0 0.8 is less than 1. We have a 0 here as the whole. There's no holes. There's only a part of the number, 0 0.8. And 0 0.6 or 0 0.6 is also less than 1. Therefore, the product will actually be less than the factors individually. So 0 0.48 is actually less than 0 0.8, and less than 0.6. If we were to put those three decimals into ascending order from least to greatest, 0 0.48 would be the least, the smallest of all of those decimal numbers. And you could just tell that by looking at the tenths place. Here we have eight tenths and six tenths. Here we have four tenths. So four tenths is certainly smaller than eight tenths. This eight that's in the hundreds place doesn't play a role because four is a greater place value in the tenths. If that was all confusing to you, I understand, it's okay. The main thing we need to know is that we have two factors here that are less than one, 0.8 and 0.6. Therefore, our product will be less than each of those individual factors. That's helpful because what if we had a product that was say, I don't know, maybe we thought it was 94 for some reason, 0.94. Now that's greater than 0 0.8 and 0 0.6. So we would know simply by this rule, we might have did some math wrong. Okay, and this last statement at the bottom is very important. The number of decimal places in factors is equal to the number of places in the product. We'll talk more about that, but we can see from this one example, okay, there is one decimal place in this factor of 0 0.8. There is one decimal place in this factor of 0 0.6. So that's two places altogether. Therefore, our final product must have two places after the decimal point, okay? Let's do more of that. Here we have a few examples of decimal places. Three times six equals 18. There's no decimal places there because there's no decimal places in these factors. How about three times 0.6? There is one decimal place here, so that's why we have one decimal place in our product. Moving along, 0.3 times 0.6. Well, that's one and one. It's two decimal places, and it's no coincidence that there's now two decimal places in our product. Same pattern follows. Here's 0 0.3, I'm sorry, 0 0.03. That's got two places. 0 0.6 has one place after decimal. That's three places altogether. Therefore, we have three places here. We carry the zero over from the point three. I'm sorry, from the point zero three. And the pattern will continue all day long. Here we have point zero three, point zero six. That's a total of four places. One, two, three, four after the decimal. Okay, you'll notice that 18, or at least the digits one and eight, are part of every product. That's because we know three times six is 18. So we can use that multiplication fact to help find our product. But it's, we just have to make sure that we have the correct number of decimal places and the correct number of zeros to hold the place. Okay, another way to estimate decimal products, and make sure we keep writing these down in our notes. Pause when you need to. 
is if you round each decimal number to the nearest whole number. So here we have our example, 4.89 times 0.52. That's a lot of digits to multiply if I use the standard algorithm, but if I estimate the product, I can see if I'm close. And then when I actually do the math, I can help have a better idea if I'm right or wrong. 4.89 rounded to the nearest whole number is 5. We round up. 5.2, well, that's not 5.5 or greater, so we have to round down to 5. So we round both those decimal numbers to 5. One goes rounded up, one goes rounded down. And we know 5 times 5 is 25. So when we do the math, our answer must be close to 25. Okay. And if you look on the right side here, when we multiply decimal numbers, we can multiply it standard as if we're multiplying two whole numbers together, okay? And um, as we're doing that, the only extra thing we need to do is this fact back from the bottom of the slide. The number of decimal places in the factors must be the number of decimal places in the product. So we multiply this standard algorithm. I'm not going to go through that. I think um, if we need a refresher on how to do that with whole numbers, um, Y'all can do some con or some IXL for practice or see me uh, for tutoring. Um, but the main thing I want to point out here is in 0.89 or 4.89, there's two decimal places. In 5.2, there's one. That's a total of three decimal places. So I can multiply these numbers as if they're whole numbers. I would get 25428. But then I would just insert my decimal right there, and it would be there because that would create one, two, three places after the decimal because there was a total of three places in my two factors. Okay, so we might see questions like this, 10.8 times 8.94. We don't even have to go through the whole process of multiplying this three-digit number times another three-digit number. That would take a long time and there might be some errors, but we can estimate the product by rounding, okay? So 10.8, that's closer to 11 than it is 10. 8.94, that's between 8 and 9, but it's certainly closer to 9 than it is 8. 11 times 9, we should know from our multiplication facts, so the answer will be close to 99. Okay, all these answers have the exact same digits. The only difference is the decimal point is in different places. And we can see that B is our closest answer to 99. And the other ones are actually way far off because when you move the decimal place one place, it, it changes the number by a power of 10. So certainly 99 is closest to 96 as opposed to 965 or 9. Or here this is 9,655 and 2 tenths. So we can estimate these decimals by rounding them and then choose the correct answer based on our estimate. Um, sometimes we won't be able to round or estimate, we just have to use our multiplication facts. So here we have 0 0.07 times 0 0.09. We could just use that 7 and 9, multiply those together, we know that's 63. And now we're just going to do the same thing we've been doing, we're counting our decimal places. So you'll see in our original factors we have in 0 0.07 there are two places after the decimal. Same with 0 0.09, there are two places which means we must have four total places in our product. To create four places, we know we had 63 as our digits, or a six and a three as part of our digits for our product. And to create those extra four places, we just have to make sure we insert those zeros as our placeholders. So the decimals will go to the left. The zeros will fill in right before the 63. <coughs> Excuse me, and we could also use these hints up here zero there and a zero there after decimal. So just follow those rules. Just do regular multiplication of seven and nine and then just make sure you have four places to the right of the decimal using the zeros there to hold the place. Okay, one more example and I think we're ready for independent work. 8.9 times 0.4. Okay, there's not much rounding we could do here. There's not much of our multiplication facts from one to 12 we could use. So I would just multiply these two numbers as if they're whole numbers. So 8.9, I'm just going to rewrite it as 89. And 0.4, I'll just write it as 4. And we just do our multiplication. 9 times 4 is 36. 
bring down 6, carry to 3, 8 times 4 is 32, add to 3 that we carried, 35. So it looks like 356. But we're going to keep this rule, it's going to follow us the rest of our life. We want to insert decimal, decimal places based on the number of places um, in the factors. So same thing we've been doing. So if we go back up here to our original expression, we see that we have one place here after the decimal, we have one place here after the decimal. Total together, that is two places. So 356 was what we got when we multiplied as if they're whole numbers, but we know they're not. They have whole and part, so with the decimal. So two places will be after the decimal, so we have to insert the decimal point to make that happen. We put it after the 3, we see that we have 3.56, or it's better to read that as 3 and 56 hundredths. Okay, so those are a few different strategies we can use, and our independent work is here. Make sure you copy down all of this as a heading, even your page numbers. There's a challenge question there, two of them. And when you do the exercise, please write the questions and the answers.